the first two things that I want to do before we cut any structural pieces out are to take preliminary measurements of the door openings on both sides. The thing I'm concerned about mostly is height. We're going to be cutting support structure off of the back of the cab and majorly on the front of the cab. So the cab has, is at risk of completely sagging. So we want to get a height measurement from the top of the door jam to the top edge of that floor. That'll keep our door opening height. And again, we can always adjust that, but that has to be pretty damn close for everything to fit the way it should. I wanna start with this driver's side because this one is, this one's in worse condition and I really like to start with the hard stuff first. That way when we go to the easy side, it's all downhill from there. And we did our preliminary measurements. I just marked them on a piece of tape on the back of the cab. I had the bright idea on the back side here. I don't, I don't want a big chunk of metal welded in the center of the cab here where I have to work around it. I'm gonna be in there with, again, air hammers, grinders, cut off wheels and stuff. I don't wanna, I'm already gonna be crawling around this piece. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is cut a piece of tubing to go up underneath of this cowl, weld it here and, and let it touch the floor let it be snug to the floor and touch the bottom of the cowl and that will hold the front up. I don't plan on taking this thing off the jack stands until the cab is completely welded. So it, it's, it doesn't matter if it's on the floor and that'll keep our height good. And then I can just hack out all of the structural pieces all at once and not be afraid of doing that. I'm trying to figure out where I want to terminate the floor. I think I don't want to get up into the center hump area. So we'll probably be cutting part of, part of that off. And I definitely don't want to go way up into the firewall. There's a bunch of insulation against the firewall that I really don't want to get into pulling that out and having to worry about that catching on fire. So we're going to stay low and we don't need to go up in there because the rust isn't that bad up there. It's just really bad in this outside section and kind of in the bottom part of the floor. So I think we'll try to stay out of a lot of the crucial areas, even where the floor dimmer switch is mounted. Some of you probably don't even know what that is. And uh, we're gonna use the full section, we're gonna use the full length into here, and that will meet up with our rear floor section like that. Those kind of share an overlap there, and then we'll have a full outer floor section, which I'm really glad that I went this route. I'm really glad we decided to do this instead of just making the part. There's a lot of intricate body lines in here that, yeah, we can we do it? I mean, you've seen me make parts on here. It, I think that piece was maybe 20 bucks, so it's it's just worth it to wait for it to come in the mail. When we're doing all this stuff, we kind of want to put we kind of want to be thinking of putting this together like bricks. If you think about how bricks are stagger stacked or cinder blocks, that's for a reason. That's for strength. And we kind of want to do the same thing here or or even if you were playing with Legos as as a kid, if you stacked up all your Legos in one column, they were weak, but if you staggered them like bricks, it was really strong. The same applies to this. People get intimidated or lost on the fact that, yeah, cars have a lot of flowing shapes, but at the end of the day, they're just a big box. All the math and engineering, it's the same. It's just a big box. So when we're doing our pillar area here, I want to intentionally stay low, low on this so I can come up high on the intersection of the pillar and we have a staggered weld there. If I were to just take a saw and cut right through this and then weld everything in the exact same place, that would be a major weak point. Yeah, it's welded, but there's still some memory there from that metal to just crumple an impact right on that precision line. So we wanna stagger our welding. We wanna stagger our welding in here and the same with the rear section of this. It's not so important with the floor section, but when it comes to the structural components like the A and B pillars here, we're gonna be staggering a lot of stuff. All right, so here's our new floor panel. I want to just give you an idea of what's going on inside my head and why and how I'm planning it out. We have the dimple for where the cab, where the cab mount bolt goes through. And I've kind of based my bearing of where all the stamping is on this metal from that. So measuring from center point of the bolt to where the center hump stamping is and to the crease in the floor and to the rear section of the floor and to the outside and to the inside edge of the rocker panel. It gives me a good idea of is this stamping similar to what we have in here. It's really close, but it's rough and it's not a huge deal on a floor, but still we want to keep the quality of work and the aesthetics very high. So we're going to be coming in off of the edges of this panel and trimming. So basically I don't need, I don't need all this panel. We're going to be chopping off a lot of this outer section all the way around. We're going to keep 
all this lower that folds over into a 90, but we're basically gonna come straight across here and stay just below the dimple for the mounting for the dimmer switch. And then we will start to do one of these numbers. After the floor bends up into the cow panel, there is a seam in the floor where the firewall meets the floor panel. I want to stay just below that so we can, so we have plenty of room to do a nice weld along there. So we're going to only go up about an inch off of that bend and come straight across. And then it gets interesting again. There's another there's another piece of stamping there where the gas pedal goes. I want to stay out of that. I took a wire wheel, cleaned it all up. The metal cleaned up very nicely. So we don't need to replace that section. Anything that we don't need to replace, we're not going to do. It just doesn't make sense. We want to stay away from a lot of this stuff. That way we have plenty of room to weld, to grind, to do whatever body work we need to do. Um, so we're just going to stay inside a lot of the outer edge of the clamping. I want to I want to kind of break this down for you if you're working on a set of floors, doesn't matter if it's for a C10, whatever it is, just because you get this whole section doesn't mean you have to replace this whole section. Just trim off what you don't need, make it, make it easier, so always make it easier on yourself for the next step. Always be planning ahead, plan your mistakes. Now I'm getting ready to cut a lot of the lower section of the A pillar out. We have our bracing, that's very important. Because once we remove this whole bottom section, the cab is actually going to want to sag or collapse. Uh, there's a lot of metal still in the firewall. We're keeping a lot of floor in there. So is it going to sag that much? No, but still the bracing will help. Um, it's really hard for me to get in here tight. I'm, my back's really tight against the wall here. So I just want to show you on the new panels exactly what we're going to be doing. Um, again, what I preach all the time is you don't have to use all of the panel they give you. And on here, I'm gonna to try to stay as low as possible. There's some pinholing in the bottom of this little stamped horn here. We're gonna stay just above that. As long as the metal looks clean and we cut through it, that's as far as we're gonna go. We're gonna go just above, the, there are some bolts that come through the back side of this from this support brace on the back. And we're gonna cut we're going to cut just above those bolts. That's it. And then on our support side, it again, it's only rusted in a small section. There's a little bit of surface rust back here. All that's going to clean up nicely with the wire wheel. I already tested it in a few spots. We just want to replace only what we need to replace. Could we do this entire section? Yeah, but again, I like to keep as much of the factory sheet metal on there as possible for A, for convenience, and when it comes to fit and finish, there really is nothing better than the factory, factory stamped piece. Um, so we're going to stay away from, we're going to stay as far away from the center for support structures we can. We'll probably come, we'll probably only take about, I don't know, three inches out of this and put this new piece in. Of course, the inner, the inner chunk of the A pillar, all the inner chunk of the A pillar is also right out. They, they did a nice job in the last time and they just boogered fiberglass in there. Not sure what that was going to do. But it's important to mention that th this would have been very dangerous out on the road. Having the having this lower a having this lower a pillar section rotted and the inner a, inner a pillar and the cab support all in that same spot, that was a ticking time bomb. If this had taken a side impact, it would have just crumpled very badly in seriously injured whoever was in the cab of this thing. So I'm glad we're taking care of it now. Mike and his family are gonna be much safer with all this stuff nicely welded in. Um, so now that you have a clue as to what the hell is going on, I am gonna get suited up and get to work. When you're grinding, when you're grinding and cutting these parts out, if you have any glass or parts of the vehicle that need to be protected, make sure you cover those up. Watch where your sparks are flying. In this C10, all the glass is being replaced. Most of the stuff in the dash is, so I'm not too worried about it here. Like I said before, we're just slowly taking pieces off this truck. Think of yourself as a sheet metal archeologist. You wanna slowly work those panels back so you're not damaging parts that you wanna keep. Now the only thing holding the floor in is a bunch of spot welds that are holding the floor to the braces. And we're gonna use my favorite spot weld cutting tool, one of these fat grinding discs. 
3M sells them and this is a Norton wheel. These are awesome for grinding welds and especially spot welds like this. You just gotta be careful when you're grinding spot welds instead of drilling them or actually even in drilling them. You only wanna go through one layer of sheet metal. We're gonna be welding new spot welds into the new floor there. We don't wanna make the metal thin or non-existent. So you gotta go slow and be careful and slowly peel that metal back. We have made a ton of headway. Boom, there's a big hole in the floor. The A-pillar section's completely out of there. I only ended up grinding a few of the spot welds. I didn't want to grind too far up underneath the dash. There's still insulation, insulation and stuff that can catch on fire in there. So I just made an extremely sharp air hammer bit and just slowly peeled the, and just used that and slowly peeled the floor off of the bracing. The bracing is much heavier gauge steel so that sheet metal wants to relieve itself from that. You've heard the old saying, measure twice, cut once. Well, when I'm doing sheet metal work, I like to leave extra on both sides of the cut and cut a few times. I'd rather just slowly work those panels back to where they need to fit and that way they fit perfectly. Again, setting ourselves up for success with cutting and welding, there on this A-pillar section, the rust was right about, ended right about here. But I wanna come up into here just to make sure there isn't any heavy pitting in there. This is an extremely important structural part. I, I don't wanna play any games here. But what we can do is set ourselves up for success with welding, grinding, bodywork, things like that. Um, there is a body line right here. So we're gonna stay back about an inch from that. And also we're gonna stay out of this crease right here. It'd be a pain in the butt to weld in there and grind in there. We wanna, we wanna really set ourselves up for that. As I mentioned, I probably already mentioned in the video, a couple in this video alone a couple times, we wanna do stuff one side at a time. And a really good reason is things like this. Now that I'm getting ready to cut this and clamp it in place where it's gonna be forever, I wanna to go to that side and get a height measurement off of key points, like off of this body line to the bottom of this piece, just to get a bearing of where this thing needs to be and how do we know it's in the right spot. I cut the pillar, this new pillar piece to length, and then now we've got it clamped in place. I went over to the other side and made some measurements and I wrote them right on this piece, that way they're right where they need to be. So now it's all clamped in place, It's the measurements are dead nuts, perfect. So we'll take a very sharp, I don't know if that'll focus on that, a very sharp scratching awl. We'll be able to get a precision line to cut that and weld that to. My aim with cutting it isn't to cut right to the line. I like to cut back a little bit and then grind up to the line slowly. And then that way we can get this thing clamped perfectly into place where it needs to be. I'm gonna move on and get the rest of this, this inner A-pillar piece trimmed out on the inside as to where it needs to be, and then we'll get the new one cut to shape. Again, you don't have to use all of this panel. I'm gonna be using very little of it. And then, once we get this bad boy fit, then we can cut our inner hat channel piece for the cab support. You can see the ends cut off of this. It's still rusty. We gotta go back probably, boy, about that far. There's quite a bit of pitting in there. Um, and I wanna make sure we get it all taken care of. Um, and then from there, we can cut that piece and get that fit up. And then after that, the floor. Our biggest goal in trimming this panel back is two things to make life easier on us putting the new floor in. And by doing that, we're gonna make the floor look as factory as possible. My biggest goal with replacing the sheet metal is just to make it look as factory as possible. I want someone to be able to pull that carpet up or look underneath the truck and not even realize a new floor pan's been welded in. The first fit of the floor looks pretty damn good for a first fit up. Um, obviously we gotta do a little bit of trimming. The back of this floor is sitting up because this needs to rotate into the pillar but there's a, still a little bit of sheet metal over here holding that up. So we're gonna trim that sheet metal off, get this thing to sit a little better. Uh, but all in all, it looks pretty damn good. All of my planning and layout around the gas pedal mount worked out really well. I gotta do a little trimming over there. But when you're fitting panels up like this, it's easier to remove material than it is to add material. So make sure you cut it larger than you think it's gonna be. You saw me do that on, well, pretty much every piece. I've set it like a broken record, but I've had to tune most of the stamping off on these panels. 
You might be thinking you should have spent more money and bought nicer panels, but that's not always the case when it comes to aftermarket sheet metal. Some are good, some are bad, and some are great. And I've worked with panels from some pretty big name companies and still had stamping issues where I had to tune it. I get these videos are long and people are here more for entertainment than education, but I can't knowingly leave this stuff out. These are the little tiny details that's going to make your life easier no matter what you're doing. All right, so it's fitting pretty okay now. Um, to the point we're gonna screw the floor down to clamp it in place. Now when we have a big open span of sheet metal like this, they make really long clamps, but it's hard to get them in there and sometimes they lose clamping pressure in a long run like this where you need them to clamp really hard. They'll actually twist and not be that tight. My favorite and a lot of sheet metal and body men across the country use these little tiny self-tapping zip screws. If everything fits and looks okay, I'll scribe all the way around the floor and we'll also go on the other side and take a Sharpie and mark where our supports are so we can mark where we need to add our spot weld holes. Um, I'm going to get locked back off and we will do some screwing and see how it looks. <laughs> do some screwing. The tacking process can be slow and tedious, but it's tacking for a reason. If something doesn't look right, cut the welds, take it off, adjust. And once you start welding in permanently, just take your time, do small welds, let it cool, take breaks, walk away. Getting this outside A-pillar piece welded in is a huge milestone. Now we have a fixed piece on the corner of this truck that we can work all of our other measurements from. One note I wanna to touch on before I grind is, I've mentioned this in other videos, but it's even more crucial on a structural component, and that is grinding technique. An issue I had and I've seen others have when they start working with sheet metal and welding it is grinding it and specifically over grinding it. So let's say these are our two pieces that we are marrying together with a weld. There's a gap there, we weld it, and our that's our weld. Well now when we come in with the grinder, our main focus is just grinding the weld. That's all we want to touch with the grinder. We don't want to be grinding are pieces of thin sheet metal. So when you grind, you want to be hitting the top of the weld on every pass. You don't want to pitch your grinder and touch the thin sheet metal. And I've seen a lot of people starting to do this want to have a nice pretty flat surface and get a little crazy with the grinder and then you grind your sheet metal too thin and if you burn a hole through it, that's one thing. But the problem is if you grind that thin and don't realize it's thin, then you run into issues down the road. If it's just a sheet metal component that's aesthetic, not a big deal. But on a structural part, if you're burning this thing down with a grinder and making micro pinholes, when this thing gets in an accident, it's gonna crumple instantly. Even when grinding, I'm still moving the grinder and moving it as slowly as possible to keep the metal cool. I move the grinder around from spot to spot. Sometimes I walk away. The trick with sheet metal is to keep it as cool as possible. Now with our bottom A-pillar piece in here, we're able to, to fine tune the floor so much better. We have a reference point that's fixed. You can see how much work it takes just to get to this final fit up, but it is totally worth it. Like I've said in a lot of my videos, it's so easy to watch those car shows where they transform a car in 20 minutes and think it's just all gonna be easy. Granted, those shows are great for inspiration. It's what got me into this trade, but I think there's a lot of value of knowing what to expect when you get into these projects. I've seen too many people's project cars come and go because they get something that they think is gonna be simple as replacing a couple rockers and they get into the vehicle and it's just totally trash and it just takes more time and money than they ever expected. Everything's sitting pretty well now. Um, after just a ton of hammer and dolly tuning every single place I can think of, things are finally looking really good in there. What I wanna do is I wanna put a few more zip screws and a few other crucial spots just to lock this in. And the nice thing with those zip screws is, uh, you probably saw me doing it here on the floor, you can realign all of those holes and get an exact lineup again and again. And when we go to put the rocker and the cab corner in this thing, those will be very crucial because it doesn't impede the door opening. So you can screw those in and shut and close the door and fit your panel before you weld them. We're gonna go ahead, blast a few more zip screws in. I think the next thing I really wanna work on is starting to fit, starting to fit this 
uh, lower cab support. Now that we have the floor basically where it's gonna be, I'm com I'm really happy with where this thing's sitting. Because of our opening, because of the door opening height and the preliminary measurements we took off everything, our floor is a good indicator of where this thing will need to end up. So as long as the floor is sitting exactly where it needs to be, then when we cut and weld this new piece in, we'll know that our floor height is exactly where it needs to be. I did the final fit of the hat channel off camera. This is the final trim and fit for the floor. And then we're gonna jump right into welding, following the similar process of the A-pillar. Tacking, going slowly, and checking our fit. Did I ever mention how much I hate grinding? This is the best access we're ever gonna to have to the cab structure as far as cleaning it up and repainting it. Now, I'm gonna be wire wheeling the entire frame and using a coating similar to Pore 15, and I'll be doing it on the bottom of the cab as well. But everything's cleaned up really nicely with a wire wheel. With a lot of older steel like this, you can knock off a ton of surface rust off of it and bring it right back down to white metal and make it look really nice. It's actually a different composition of steel than you would find in a newer vehicle. It's very abusable and very reusable. On the inner structure, I wired wheeled that really nicely and whatever areas had leftover rust, I sprayed my favorite rust converter on. This Loctite stuff, for whatever reason, I've had the best longevity with this. I sprayed two coats of that on there and we're gonna let that sit overnight. I'm not gonna spray any other chemicals on top of it. In the meantime, while that dries, I am going to hit all of my areas where we're gonna have pass-through plug welds with this zinc-based weld through primer. So we have a good corrosion barrier there, or the best we can do for now. Now we're drilling the quarter inch plug weld holes that will weld through the floor down into the floor brace. To mark where they all go, I drew on the underside of the floor around the floor braces and then just measured in a little bit. The best practice for plug welds is just duplicate whatever the factory did. And if you can't figure out what the factory did, then just about every two inches will be fine. I've set the floor in here the second time. Everything looks bueno. There are a few key spots that just sit perfectly all along this panel and it goes and it just goes to show that's why I put so much work into fitting this panel initially. And again, I can't say that when welding sheet metal, you gotta go slow. Tack here, tack there, take breaks, walk away, let it cool down. Just like the pillar section, we're working on those crucial fit up points first. We've got off the floor tacked in permanently in place and a few of the spot welds done through the structural pieces of the cab. So now we're able to finish fit and weld in this bottom section of the A-pillar that we spoke about and our C-channel for the bottom of our cab. Uh, this piece in particular, I might not cover that much of welding this thing in there, but if you follow the same principles I use to fit everything up, it's pretty simple to connect the dots from here. We're gonna set it up in place and of course we have our metal prepped for our spot welds. So we are, we're gonna make sure that we have a nice straight piece of support. And also this face needs to line up with the bottom of our A-pillar. Where are you A-pillar? There we go. And we'll have to drill some holes and put bolts through here. From the factory, this hat was just bolted on, but I ended up putting a couple plug weld holes in there just for a little bit of, just for a little bit of extra helping hands and support. So I'm gonna crawl under there and get this thing clamped in a few spots just to get a good look at it and see how the floor meets it and we will go from there. Welcome to the dark side. All right, it's kind of see, it's kind of hard to see what's going on here. There are a lot of dark tones in this area, but here's our hat channel piece and here, this big opening is where our new piece is gonna go in. Uh, it might be hard to see on the camera, but I've worked very hard to make sure this floor sits flat with all of our bracing on the bottom of the truck. That's very important because as we weld this floor, if that's not flat, we'll get huge warps in the floor and it'll just look like poo poo and we don't want that. This is the first time I fit this channel piece under here since cutting it and it actually looks really good. We, we have good gaps. Um, there's a lot of flex, flexibility with this piece. So really what I'm trying to do is just make sure it lines up nicely with the piece that we're splicing it to. And where we're gonna start is where I usually start. Um, I wanna get these body lines lined up here and we'll burn a couple tacks in there and then take a good look at it and see what we need to do from there. The cab support tacked in really nicely. Everything fit well, so we moved right on and got the thing finished welded. 
Now that all the bottom welding is done, I switched into the cab and welded all the plug welds up. From the factory, this lower A-pillar is bolted into the cab face. So I'm drilling holes, putting new bolts in, and I also added a couple plug welds in there too. I've been kicking butt and taking names this morning. I got, come on, come on, adjust the light. I got this lower A-pillar piece all trimmed to fit in there. That looks really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and burn that bad boy in and get the rest of the floor welded in while I'm at it. What is that that I always say about sheet metal? Oh yeah, go slow. I got this piece tacked in, it looked great, so I just finished it out. As I mentioned earlier, I left this part undone intentionally. Uh, you can see, well maybe you can't see, yeah you can see the stamping is sharper on the factory sheet metal here and it's kind of rounded in here and it's right on this edge. Our next step is to replace this floor section and the bottom part of this B pillar right here. Um, but before I do that, I want to take a dull chisel and a hammer and sharpen these body lines up a little bit. I want them to match this a little closer um, because our new panel, our new panel for the rear meets that one and the stamping is actually pretty good on this. But as you see me do in other videos and especially in this one, a little bit of hammer and dolly work and some tuning of the sheet metal goes a long way for final fit and finish and that's what we're trying to do. We're always trying to make our next step easier. Also before I cut this floor section out and the lower part of the B pillar, I want to do a cross brace from our brace here down to the bottom. That'll keep our opening from moving backward and forward and then we're going to take a large and we're going to take a piece of square tubing and weld it to the edge of the cab corner right here going straight down to the floor to hold it up. I don't want the back of our cab here to drop or settle at all. And then I'm going to do a few more preliminary measurements. Like I've said, like a broken record during this entire build series, you don't have to use all of the part you get. That's extremely true on this piece because you'll notice this is a nice flat piece here. Well, that's kind of a problem because on the factory panel, there is a recessed stamping here. So that way the rocker panel can sit flush with that and it gets welded and it makes a very nice transition and use very, very, very little body filler doing it this way. Could we hammer the stamping, stamping into this? Yeah, but there's really no rust up until this edge. This is all just surface rust in here that cleans right up. It goes right to white metal with a grinder. So we're gonna come down just a little bit below this, probably about an inch and a half or so below that, and we're gonna knock that off right there. It's important to mention that this cab corner took a side impact. When you're placing sheet metal components that have sustained collision damage, you, it sounds counterintuitive, but you want to straighten as much of that part as you possibly can. You want to pull it back out. When I cut the cab corner off, I roughed all of this out as much as I could. And then we cut the cab corner out and then, and I've worked this section like crazy with slide hammers and hammers and dollies. And we've got this pretty well straightened out. There's a little bit of damage still here by this bolt. But once we get the floor cut out, this piece cut out, we can really work that inner cab support with a hammer and dolly and make it be exactly what it needs to be. Now, the interesting thing is, again, the sheet metal tells a story. There was always a gap on the factory door right here, probably about an inch gap between the rubber seal and the bottom of the door. I always thought the door was tweaked, but now that we have this all open, we know this was still in probably like an inch here and that was affecting the entire door gap. We're just going to dive right in on this rear section. I'm using a very dull chisel and a hammer to start shaping that floor so it can match the factory sheet metal. This is what I call expert level laziness. I'm using a dull chisel on an air hammer. I've got the air hammer turned down really low. I'm using it like a planishing hammer. I've done this for years and it's not just because it's faster than using a hammer, it actually makes a very nice crease at the end of the day. Then you can finish out with a planishing hammer anvil in the air hammer and smooth out all those little dents from the hammer and the chisel.
Now that the floor is shaped nicely, we can just move right on and cut this outer floor section out and the B pillar. Notice everything is still braced. I even welded a square tube to the outside of the cab corner. That stuff ain't going nowhere. I've got all my initial sheet metal cuts done on the floor and on the lower section of the B pillar. They're rough cut out, that went pretty quickly. They're all rough cut out and I also did my final cut to my replacement sheet metal and the seat belt bolt goes to this piece so I measured off of this body line and drilled my hole, it lines up nicely. One of the major benefits of replacing this floor panel and why I'm gonna also do it on the other side is I wanted to see the structural health of this cab support in the rear. From the outside, with a hammer, everything felt very, very solid. And we did that same thing on our front supports. The hammer went right through it, so obviously there was an issue there. But I wanted to make sure there wasn't every, any really heavy rust pitting in the back here. If there was, then obviously we would replace that. It's a major safety component, so we want to make sure those are all sound. It looks really good. There's some surface, surface rust in there, and of course, once we get everything all welded up, we are going to spray that Eastwood internal frame coating in there and it will last a very long time. Everything is trimmed and cut and ground to fit. It looks good. I got my plug weld holes drilled also and I got the pass through holes for the bolts that hold the B pillar onto this panel drilled. Everything is good to go. Also sprayed some weld through primer in some crucial areas. So I'm going to work on getting this thing fit up and we'll start burning this bad boy in. And of course we do the same thing with this rear floor section where we set it up and use a sharp awl to scribe the edges to get a nice and perfect fitting panel. These little butt weld clamps are probably the greatest invention in a long time. They clamp a nice tight edge for a good butt weld and they leave a little bit of a gap so you get plenty of weld penetration and it makes a nice strong joint. This rear section is going so smoothly we finished out the welding and that rear floor section is buttoned right up. Now I'm working on putting in the lower B pillar section. From the factory, this piece is only bolted to the bottom of the floor. I'm gonna put a spot weld in there. I just had to tighten up my edges here where this sits against the floor so that sits nicely there. This seam is gonna go below where the new rocker is welded on, but if it affects the fitment of that, not a big deal. Again, we have a hammer, we have a dolly, we can do whatever tune up we need to do on this, no big deal. I'm gonna work on getting this bad boy bolted in place so we can scribe our cut line and we will keep on rocking. This lower B pillar section, I just did what I've been doing on all these panels. I scribed it to length, double checked my height measurement on it and we just welded it right in. Man, we have covered some ground in the past few days. Well, for me it was days, for you it was a few minutes, but entire lower B pillar sections all welded, the floor is welded, the brace is welded, everything on this side is completely welded and ready to grind. Now I can cut out all of my doorway bracing, the B pillar bracing and the A pillar bracing. I'm gonna chop all that out. This cab floor was in much worse shape than appeared from the outside. They boogered so much fiberglass matting and bondo on this to cover up all that stuff. It was so much work. I don't understand, I don't understand why they did it. but. We fixed it, it looks good. I am heading to the other side. We did it, we got it done. Everything is welded. We even got the lower B pillar section. Where are you? Whoop. I re-measured the door opening, make sure that's good to go. It is dead nuts perfect. I'm gonna cut all of my bracing out so I can stop smashing my head on it and roll right into doing the cab corner and the rocker. However, that will be in another video. I pulled you aside and, and brought you into my mind to see how I think through a big monstrosity like this and we're finally at the end of it. Now you can take these mental tools and go apply them to whatever you're working on. It doesn't have to be a C10. You can really dive into some extensive sheet metal work and just remember the car is just a big square. It's just a big box. That's all it is. It's really not complicated. Anyone can do it and now especially you can. So don't just sit there watching passively, go actually apply some of these skills, go apply some of this thinking to something you're working on. I'm really happy to see you here watching this stuff. You could be spending your time doing so many other foolish things, but you're actually sitting down and learning something, which is awesome. I'm gonna wrap the video up right here. As always, my name is Jim Murphy. The channels you break it, you fix it. We still have a lot more to do on the C10 build series, so make sure you just subscribe so you can see what's coming forward on that. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Like the video, please hit me up down in the comments with any questions and especially if you have value to add to something that I did here, maybe you have a different way of doing it. I love to learn the easy way to do stuff. So if you see me doing something the hard way, please, 
hit me up in the comments. And that wraps it up, folks. I'll see you in another video.